I just want to describe what has had me reevaluating a lot of things recently. A lot of it has to do with, well, I'll say most of it has to do with Facebook. You make up what? Facebook? See, Facebook, um, you know, all the names that you see are supposed to be people's real names. These things are representing real people. A lot of the posts that I see are from people I know in real life. And since Trump got elected, I mean, before then it was it's it was bad, but it just it's taken it on a whole new level. Since Trump got elected, the amount of things that someone could really I, I mean, it's like it's like I'm looking at a a feed from BuzzFeed. My news feed on Facebook looks like BuzzFeed. There's there. One of the most recent ones that's going around uh, is uh, uh, they'll talk about, oh, uh, uh, go on to Grinder or Growler or Scruff and, uh, you know, scroll down in the, uh, the people near you and, and, and just and, and, and write how many, uh, how many uh, profiles you had to go through before you got to a black person. And a lot of them, 50, 60... Uh, one of them said, uh, uh, you know, it was over a hundred. And then, and you see, that's shameful. That's so shameful. And I'm thinking to myself, just... Yeah, the gay, the gay community... They, they would be saying, the gay community should be ashamed. How can we be like this? And I'm just like, you know, it's not the gay, it's not the gay community's fault that black people aren't using this very much. I mean, one of the problems I, I I'm sorry to 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 just like burst some people's bubble with this, but the black community isn't exactly very gay friendly. It's harder for black people to come out of the closet. I'm sorry. It's it's I'm, it, it, that can piss some people off, but but you know uh, uh, what one might call black culture, if there is such a thing as black culture, is not very gay friendly. It's it's more so than it used to be. A lot more than it used to be, but there is definitely a lot of uh, you know, machoism. I mean, like, like hyper masculinity going on. This and this isn't just talking about masculinity. This, this is this is where, I'm sorry, someone uses masculinity to be an asshole. You know, and this this occurs in in a lot of different cultures. I mean, like, look at military culture. There's a lot of there's a lot of that going on in military culture. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> let's. Use our masculinity to be an asshole. That's great. Yeah, that's that's just great. So, I mean... There, there aren't going to be as many uh, black people coming out of the closet. Because it's harder for them. And I think that's a shame. I, I wish that could be talked about more. But if someone says it, well, you can't, that's, you know, that's racist to say that. Well, then how does this subject get talked about? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, you know, in, the, in all the years that I've, you know, been on uh, uh, dating sites use these apps, uh, uh, you know, done things that are related to, I mean, put in, in, in ads, uh, personal ads, looked at personal ads, you know, I, I can count on one hand how many times I've seen someone say, oh, uh, uh, whites only, or I'm only into whites, or something like that. 
I've seen a number of others, oh, I'm only into this or that, but uh, whites, white people, I, man, I, like I said, I, I, can only, I can count on one hand how many times in all those years that I've seen that. And it's just like, yeah, I, I don't think this is, this is an issue like this. Now, maybe there's, there are people who, once they find out someone is black, then they, you know, th then they reject them or something. But that's not what's being talked about in these posts. What's talked about in these posts is, oh, it's shameful that there aren't there aren't very many uh, uh, black people on these apps. That's shameful. The gay community should be ashamed. And I'm just going, you know, what is with this shame shit? You know, I mean, the damn thing should be called shame book. Or feel shame book or something, you know? Let's log in so we can feel ashamed. Oh, shame on you. Shame. Shame on you. Shame. I, 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 all I can think about is the damn... Uh, when, you know, I, I've talked about this story many times, and it's when we went to this, this planning meeting for an anti-gay bill, and we wanted to ask pointed questions to the speaker uh, to show the audience, hey, this bill isn't what you think it is. Um, we need to show it's it's not some religious freedom bill. It's an anti-gay bill, and uh, you know we were doing a great job at that. And then uh, ACT UP, the uh, uh, AIDS uh, uh, awareness uh, group, barges in the room and says, "You should be ashamed of yourself. Shame, shame!" And they walked around the whole room. Uh, every step they took, they said the word shame. And uh, when they left, you know, all the work that my friends and mine and I had done uh, to get people to see uh, what was messed up about this this initiative that was trying to be shoved forth, it was it was all in vain. And you could see the speaker uh, smiling ear to ear. So, you know, I, I, I what just. I know that, that religious people have done this shame game for a long time, okay? I, I, I get it. I get it, but that doesn't make it right for you to do just because, well, you've been shamed for a long time, so let's shame others. You're kind of, you're normalizing shame. <laughs> Here we go. Shame on you for normalizing shame, right? Um, but this shit's just driving me nuts. It's it's like you 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 log onto Facebook and it's time to feel shame, shame, shame. I I I I I think of going to Facebook and I I hear those people walking around the room saying shame, shame, shame. That's what I hear every time I see the Facebook logo. I don't want to go on to it. Because I know that if I, if I make any arguments with almost any of these people, and some of these people I know, I, I know in person, they will stop being friends with me, and their friends will, that, that um, I may not have met in person, but they're friends with me on Facebook, will drop that friendship with me too. You can't argue with any of this stuff. And, and you know, when I've talked about this subject in the past, People will tell me, well, this is just online. This is just online. Facebook's a little different than that in the regards that a lot of these people you know in person. And they will drop friendships with you. And they will give you a bad reputation just for not agreeing with them. And this stuff is constant. Buzz face, face feed. <laughs> um, just I can't stand it, and and I, you know, I I I'd leave the platform if I didn't have so many. That was wasn't the only way that I could reach a number of people. 
if that wasn't a place where there are some there are some uh, groups in in Facebook that I like. But I would be completely out of contact with with so many people if I was to to quit the platform. So I just basically shut up, try to post my uh, my silly uh, commercials videos on there, uh, maybe an occasional. A funny uh, little meme here and there, like this one that I made recently. It says "coming soon," and the in the uh, in the top with a uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto font, and below it shows you know it's a picture of the White House, but the white I made it orange, right? I made the White House orange. You know, oh, I got some laughs out of that. You know, okay. So, um, but it, it it's kind of sad to me. That because of, of how things have gotten, you here on YouTube, you know, the, 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 the you know, people who have subscribed to me, you know more about me than a lot of my uh, friends. And I think that's weird. I think that's kind of messed up. I think it's messed up that things have gotten so polarized that people don't even want to get to know someone if they aren't part of their tribe. I think that's incredibly sad. And it's why and it's it's why it's disappointing when I see atheists treating religious people like shit for no reason at all. Or I see religious people treating atheists like shit for no reason at all. We'll just just treat them like shit. You know, any of that. It's it's crap. It's just crap. And then we expect multiculturalism to work out when we can't even handle shit on our on Facebook. You know, when people can't even handle these these differing opinions on Facebook. Facebook, a fuck, just, you know. Facebook has fucked up so much stuff. I'm sorry. It, fa it You know, MySpace, MySpace at least allowed people to express themselves, you know, creatively, artistically, whatever. You know, it was it, the interface before it was Justin Timberlake'd. You know, um, you know, if someone wanted to be more private, they could be more private. If they wanted to be more public, they could be more public. It was great for for the music scene. Now, I mean, Facebook doesn't. Facebook's crap. I mean, for it, it doesn't help bands that much. But one of the problems too, I mean, around here, the uh, uh, the band scene. You used to actually be able to get play paid to do original music. Now it's 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 pretty much pay to play. You've got to sell so many tickets or just give them a, a you know a certain amount of money. Oh, sure you can play now. Are you serious? And that's that's just that's how it's changed. That's how the industry's changed. And then I think about the uh, the gay scene, um, stuff that's happened since around you know the Seattle freeze, around 2002, 2003. You know all the actual diversity in the gay community just started to die, just fucking died, and everything, anything that was that was you know LGBT related started to change their their establishments to uh, cater towards those that like to spend a lot of money J just that element i mean of course places want to want to uh, uh i mean business isn't going to be a business if it's not there to make money to some degree but you know the business the gay businesses used to cater to certain very certain crowds and it made it it made it just a very cool area and then and then 
like there used to be uh, it, there used to be bars that and establishments that would uh, cater to my, a more dirty kind of crowd. Uh, others that would care to more of a cater to more of a a twink kind of crowd. Um, you know, the Eagle was always the place you'd go, and they'd they'd play rock, and you'd have people that enjoy rock and like that whole scene, and um, you could actually picture a band uh, uh, being played in the upstairs of it. You know, it'd be cramped, but you could picture a band there, and uh, you know, it, it just it it. It had that feel, and now it's it's, 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 it's every every place you can go is it's, it's, it's because people who great the clip that I used to uh, uh, pull pull that shirt back so it you know it just looks like looks like my uh, just my head uh, just broke. Um, certain kinds of music brings in certain crowds. And that whole reason, that whole rigmarole that happened way back, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. I did something stupid um, at uh, the cuff. Um, but the whole the whole rigmarole really was over the fact that I was going to play. I wanted to put put rock in the jukebox, and I guess there's a number of people who that makes un- uncomfortable. Well, I'm the person that, you know. I, EDM for a while, for quite a while there would actually give me a panic attack, but now it just you know, I can handle it, but I just I can't stand it. It makes me a little uncomfortable, but it doesn't give me a panic attack now. But you know, I I was so happy that initially one of my main reasons for wanting to go to that place was the fact that hey, they have a jukebox and we don't have to listen to EDM the whole fucking time. And so there was this incident with the bartender, and I was 86 out of the place. Um, and just knowing how strongly, you know, these places feel about making sure that you don't alienate in any way the clientele that spends the most money. Um, you know, it's it. All the uniqueness has died, and it's all about kind of the the lowest common denominator and the, and the crowd that that has lots of people with the attitude of I'm too good to talk to you. You know, so I, I've 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 given up on the on uh, the gay uh, uh, nightlife scene. I mean, if I lived, it maybe if I lived in Portland, it would be different. Portland has a, of course, it's been a f- quite a few years since I've been in Portland. Maybe that's changed too. Um, San Francisco obviously has some has some cool places in that way, but this area, man, uh, Tacoma used to always have at least three gay bars, at least. There are some really, really cool ones. There's this one, and for anyone that lives in the area, I mean, you could probably look these things up. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, there's this one place called the 24th Street Tavern. It's on 24th and Pacific Avenue. Dive. A total, total dive. And and on the weekends, they'd have drag shows. And, and it was a blast. It, it, it was just, it was a load of fun. And it had, they had a lot of room, but the, the building was weird. Very quirky building. Um, almost had this feeling like this feeling like the ceiling was low or, or, or like it maybe it was crooked or it, the ceiling was crooked a little bit it just it 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 was a weird design it almost made you feel a little bit uncomfortable but it was exciting at the same time you know it, and it was a neighborhood bar feel right that was cool that was really cool uh, before that you know there was a place that, that was called the polar bear and then uh, Pierce transit wanted to do all this construction and they didn't let anyone park anywhere near that bar, and it closed. Um, then there was uh, Goodfellas on... Uh, uh, when you go to, to down Rustin Way, uh, you can keep on heading uh, you know, towards uh, Point Defiance, and eventually the road curves around, you go up, and then you end up on Pearl, and you make a right. Well, right before you get to Pearl, 
there was this place it was all all wood all this dark wood it was really cool and they call it goodfellas and uh, another you know neighborhood tavern feel very friendly it, it didn't uh didn't cater to, to the uh, you know that that one that one demographic you know great place loved that place and that closed then there was the uh, airport tavern on 50 something and uh, south tacoma way and that closed uh, at some point uh, early last year or was it late 2015 I think it might have been late 2015. Wait a minute. Well, it was somewhat recently. Um, that place was cool, but that closed. And uh, so now all Tacoma has left is uh, Club Silverstone, which is owned by the same people that that own the Cuff, and they have this attitude of, uh, I mean, you could you could have just had three drinks. Um, you could have three drinks there and you could say, hey, can I, can I have a glass of water? No, no, uh, you, uh, no, we don't do that. Yeah, you have to have, buy a $2 uh, bottle of water. Well, you, you have, you know, water there and you have glasses. Can I just, can I just get a glass of water? No, $2. Now I'm picturing that kid going, I want my $2, you know, um, it's that stingy. Uh, yeah, fuck that. You know, it, it, it's and that's just what I'm talking. What I'm noticing when it comes to the gay community, this this sort of attitude is what almost all businesses have had to to come to anymore. They can't care about individuals that much. They can't care about anything other than just. The very bare minimum basics of staying afloat. There's no room for anything else anymore. Nobody's willing to take any chances on anything anymore. That's why we're seeing all these fucking sequels when it comes to the entertainment industry. Oh, look, another sequel. Oh, look, another remake. They don't want to take any chances. Everything's this way now. As we, uh, as things become in a way, there's so many huge chains that you can go anywhere in the United States and find the same places, you know, find the same stores, the same chains. Everything's losing its individuality. <sighs> Sorry, just a kind of a rant there. Um, So yeah, when I when I go to Facebook, it's just uh, shame, shame, shame. And I'm just like, oh no. Why after? Just I, I can't I, I can't wrap my mind around it. After Trump gets elected, why would people double down on the insanity? Hey, let's just double down on the BuzzFeed shit. Now, I know that I had had uh, went, you know, I, I had a major change uh, after the, the election. I definitely tilted, toward, you know, went more liberal than I was. Um, but... Man, the degree that some people have gone, it's just... It makes me feel really alone. Makes me feel really alone. I know I'm not alone, but it, it makes me feel alone.
I mean, there could be a lot of people on Facebook that could that could give me support if I was saying, you know, hey, this I, I'm really, really down right now, and people would give me support. But as far as feeling like people on that platform on actually understanding me, man, I feel alone there, and I feel alone when I I want to go out and, and uh, you know at night at the, during the times that I just want to be around people, I feel alone. The only places that seem to be enjoyable to go to are not uh, gay establishments. There's a place in in there is a place in in Seattle, uh, the Crescent. But there's no way to get anywhere near that area without paying. Oh, let's pay twenty five dollars for parking. Oh, fuck it. No, I can't. I can't afford that. So, yeah, frustrating. Um, and I haven't, I, I've, I, I have a number of gay friends that I guess I could, it, but, I could I could call some gay friends, but if I I think if I tried to talk about this stuff, they I'd get shunned there too. If I called them, you know, man, this stuff is just over the top. I mean, I understand people being upset at Trump. I don't have a problem with when when you know the posts that people are putting when they're talking about Trump. And worries about what Trump is going to do. Worries about the people he has on his cabinet. But man, this this BuzzFeed shit, man. Just what? <sighs> I guess I don't know what to say now. So.